Hi guys, it's your girl Steffi and today we are going to be talking about my project that I did with Glenn Fittich and Heisner Baiety. When I got reached out for this project, I was so confused because I never would imagine that I would be collaborating with, of course, Heisner Baiety, but also Glenn Fittich, which is a, it's a whiskey alcohol brand. So it's very interesting that they came to me as a digital fashion artist to create something for them. Now the brief that they gave me was a crypto fashion collection that will be composed of three NFTs and each look will be inspired by an artist's interpretation of the iconic filigree package design of the Grand Corona. So what was really interesting is that two different worlds were colliding and one of them of course was uh, the whiskey background and of course Glenn Fittich alongside paired along with digital fashion which honestly before I worked with Glenn Fittich, I had no idea that every year they gave back to the arts community. And this year they decided to invest in digital fashion and that's why they chose to work with me. So, you know, it was really good to know that they gave back to the art communities. And, you know, I always thought that Glenn Fittich, they just sold alcohol and that was it. But no, I was proven wrong. They actually, you know, of course, give back every year, which is lovely to hear. So previously, Glenn Fittich had collaborated with a few different artists to create packaging designs for their Grand Corona whiskey, which then I was to work with three of them, three of those artists, and take their packaging design and then turn it into a digital fashion piece. So it was a really interesting brief and I've never done anything like it before, but I was so ready to take on the challenge. And at the end of the journey, after creating these free digital fashion pieces, we would sell them as NFTs and any profits made from the NFTs would be given to other art communities or art charities. Let's start with the free artists that created these three different packagings and I will show you guys their work and how I got my inspiration of my digital fashion pieces from them. So the first artist is Mskisi Mbane and I hope I pronounced his name right. He is a South African fashion designer and founder of an Afrofuturistic luxury brand Imprint ZA. And what I could see from a lot of his work is that there's a lot of bold prints and lots of graphic prints all to do with his culture and his heritage and so I really wanted to keep those prints within the pieces that I represented. I feel like it was highly important to not erase all of that culture that he's beautifully brought in his pieces so we decided to keep that. And then the next person is Mawina Konopaka. She is a designer and an illustrator of Oko Ceramics Collection. Her style is very graphic, it's very illustrative at the same time, hand-drawn, but also there's, very there's a lot of clean shapes and clean colours within her work. And our last artist is David Servan Schreiber, and he likes to utilise the tactility of these organic materials when creating his art. And from his packaging, we could see that he burnt away some of the wood and he filled some parts in with some gold foiling and it just created this really beautiful organic sculpture or organic print. So after learning about these three different artists, I decided that I wanted to take elements from their packaging designs and then also add another layer of my own design on top. So for me, my art is always a way to celebrate Chinese culture and it's also a way for me to combine modern uh, technology or modern techniques with traditional patterns and cuts. So I decided to use techwear or like streetwear as my base for these digital garments, but then also fuse it with some Chinese elements, whether that's if it was like the patterns or if it was decorative pieces or just the actual textures. So I decided to go for something like that. And so I decided to create a mood board, yeah? Every good project starts with a mood board and visual references. So with each one, I created three different mood boards and I also wanted to keep it true to the artists. Yeah, I didn't want to take too much away from their work, but their work is also to be celebrated alongside my digital fashion. So I decided to 
head over to my iPad and start sketching. With my iPad, I'm able to ideate pretty quickly and also sketch my ideas down pretty quickly as well. After thinking about these digital fashion pieces, it was time to think about the 3D environments I like to put them in. And if you guys know my work, I always like to give the digital fashion garments a story and a place for them to live in. So what I really wanted was almost like a surreal dreamscape. And as you can see from this mood board, you get the vibe. This was the kind of vibe I wanted to bring it in. And I wanted all of these three different garments to live in the same world. Next, we built it all in Quo 3D and each one had their own difficulties, I would say, especially for the ones that had asymmetrical cuts that tends to be a lot harder than the ones that are more symmetrical. So all of the garments were made in Clo 3D, but any of the accessories were made in Cinema 4D. So after we checked the simulation of all the pieces, made sure that the walking cycles were okay, made sure that the simulation was all good, we moved on to Substance Painter and we started to do the texturing. And of course, you guys know me, texturing is always my favorite part when it comes to 3D. It's just so much fun. And just bringing it into Substance Painter and seeing it on a 3D model is always such a good process to do. Next, we brought everything into Cinema 4D where we could create our 3D environment and bring all the textures together, bring the garments together. And so we had three different scenes. Now, I wanted them to be all in the same world but in different locations of that world. So we couldn't have them all the same or in the same camera angle or in the same location because that just wouldn't make sense. So I had to think about, of course, how to not only put them in different camera angles, but how to light each scene differently. And that also took extra time, but it's fine because the end result turned out pretty good. In the 3D environment, the hardest thing for me was actually making the water because you can fake it. You can fake it using redshift and some like noise pattern, but it looks fake, right? So I think what I ended up doing was, I think I used X particles and I used their wave deformer or whatever they had in X particles and that actually turned out pretty good. So I used that instead and then Another issue I ran into was Forrester. I love Forrester, it is the go-to plugin for like, you know, trees, grass, flowers, rocks, all that jazz. But for when you are animating, it takes a lot of memory and it slowed, well, it slowed my computer a lot, especially when I, it came to rendering. And when I wanted to render on my computer, it just, it was just too long to calculate all those different particles blowing in the wind and making it look nice. So I ended up using a render farm and I ran into some issues with the render farm. I don't, I don't, I don't even want to think about that time. It was just stressful because these, well, some of these render farms, some of them don't support your plugins, even though it was on their website. So I was a bit annoyed because on their website, it said it supported the certain plugin, Forrester, but then when it came to actual rendering, it wasn't there. Like, it rendered everything but that plugin. And I was like, yo, what's up? I had to look for so many different render farms until I found one that finally did it. And yeah, it was a, it was a painful process and also a very expensive one. So if you guys can, you know, avoid using render farms, yeah, I would, but. What can I do? I, I had a deadline and I had one PC that I was working on. I was rendering at the same time. And sometimes when you're rendering and it, you know, your computer's going at it, you can't really do anything else but just wait in, in case that it will crash, you know? So that's the reason why I opted for a render farm this time because I thought it would be quicker, but it ended up being very stressful. The next thing that I needed to provide for this campaign was me wearing the outfits digitally, which was interesting and fun. <laughs> That's all I can say. With the process of wearing outfits digitally, uh, I can create a whole YouTube video about that just based on how to do it, but it's funny. I can tell you roughly, roughly how it works. You basically got to wear something skin tight if it's like a what do they call it a bodysuit or like something like this but you can wear like a leggings 
biker shorts, something skin tight, and I mean that. So you wear something like that, and you go out, you take your picture or your video of yourself posing in your final pose, you bring that back, and then you would get your 3D model of your garment, put it in the same pose as what you took in your final pose, and then you would Photoshop it on. So the actual process is not actually sexy. It's not, it's not, it's just Photoshop work. But if you guys can make, you know, your 3D garments look like they're actually, you're actually wearing them and real, it's such a cool result, I would say. But anyways, we can make a whole video about how to do this uh, wearing digital fashion and this Photoshop business. But um, yeah, let me know if you guys would like to see that. And so we created the animations and we also created the assets for me wearing the digital fashion digitally. So those were the two deliverables that I had to make for this campaign. And it was finally time to launch it. And they made a whole page dedicated to this project. And I will show you guys right now. Honestly, the web page build is freaking amazing. So when two worlds collide, that's me. So this talks about Glenn Fittich history and how they decided to work with me for the Grand Coron campaign. And so this introduces the three different artists that we based our digital garments off. So this is the first one. I love this website so much. Some of my work in progress and behind the scenes. Yeah, and this is a lot of behind the scenes here of his work. And we've got the next artist. So nice. Honestly, kudos to the person or the people, the group of people who made this website happen. And of course, our last artist. Me sketching again behind the scenes. There we go. And that is it. We also have the final part of the journey, which was to sell these as NFTs. So I launched these as NFTs and I gave them a price of 1.5 Ethereum at the time. And I was very nervous, you know, I was like, what if these don't sell at all? What if, what if nobody buys them? You know, it'd be such a disappointment to like, to put these up for sale and to, to hopefully donate these proceeds to charity. But what if nobody buys it? Imposter syndrome coming in and yeah. Even though I've sold NFTs before, I get this feeling every single time. And so we decided to sell them for 1.5 Ethereum and I was waiting and waiting and they were bought by the lovely Victoire, which I hope I'm saying their name right. So she decided to buy all the pieces and I'm like, damn, you go, thank you. And so all of the pieces were sold and we decided to give all the proceeds to three different organizations or charities. And the three organizations were Creative Mentor Network, and they are a mentorship scheme where they help young people coming from lower social economic backgrounds to tackle the barriers of the creative industry. The second one is Epic Arts, and it is an international inclusive arts organization based in Cambodia. And they believe in the arts as a form of expression and empowerment, bringing people with and with disabilities together. The last one is 3D Wizards, which is a community I created myself to empower and to support 3D artists who want to learn 3D and who want to connect with other 3D artists. And that is the project, my friends. And honestly, I'm still so stoked that I was able to work with Glenn Fittich and Heisner Biety. And I still can't believe that we managed to make it all happen. You know, it's, it's a project, it's all done, it's done and dusted, but you know what? It was a very successful one in my eyes because we got to create something new together. It was a challenge for both myself and the client, but also we got to raise money for creative communities and also give the proceeds back to the art community. So I feel like these types of projects are really hard to come by and I'm, I was so honoured that I was able to create something like this. 
I hope you guys enjoyed listening to the behind the scenes of this project and you know what if you guys want to know more about it feel free to put it in the comments down below and the reason why I'm sharing so much details and information about my past projects with you guys is because I want to show you guys what is possible within digital fashion because digital fashion is such a new avenue a new industry so I just want to show you guys that you know projects like this do exist if you guys are interested into jumping into digital fashion then maybe one day you could be doing something like this and if you guys didn't know already I stream every Thursday on Twitch and I stream digital fashion projects so if you guys want to chat to me live or catch me there or just chill and watch the process you know what to do come through on Thursday and if you haven't already join my discords I've got two so the first one is 3D Wizards it's a community for 3D artists if you guys want to learn more 3D or get to know other 3D artists then join there and I have my own personal discord for my NFT arts or just like my Twitch in general so that one is called Imperial Digi Realm. so feel free to join that one if you guys want to chat to me more instant on there I'm pretty much on there pretty much every day and that is it for today thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video